Hi, I'm Lorene Landon, and we are here on the set of Radical Videos. It, it is a segment of Terror Tales, an anthology directed by Jimmy Lee Combs. So, enjoy the show. Please watch Groovy TV. We're having so much fun here. Woo! Hey, this is Groovy. I'm here with the legendary Lorene Landon. We're on the set of Terror Tales here in Denver, Colorado. How the heck are you doing? I am doing great. I chose the greatest profession in the world. I was thinking growing up, what can I do? What, what can I do to make a lot of money with the least amount of education? <laughs> and it was acting. So I'm just ma making that up. It's true. Um, I'm having a fam fantastic time here in Denver. It's beautiful. I love the people. I've never been here before. Really? And I never plan on coming back. Uh, but anyway, we're having an amazing time uh, shooting Radical Video. This particular segment of this anthology. Are we on camera too? <laughs> hi mom. Oh, she's dead. Ah, uh, hi. So is dad. Um, hi inmates. <laughs> Those are my biggest fans. And We're huge with the pr prison culture. I love it. So, um, yeah, so I'm, uh, I, I'm having a fabulous time here, incredible time, and um, it's great to finally meet you. I've heard so much about you. I, I'm honored to meet you. You're a legend. What does that mean? I'm old. That, mean, that means I'm old. No, it means you've had a lot of successes in your life and you've done some amazing things. I and have. You're, you're doing amazing things now and you have more stuff coming up too. More stuff coming up. I just did seven films back to back. I know, it's crazy. I, I, yeah, my age, right? right? <laughs> any, any age. Go figure. Go figure. Um, usually a woman over 40, uh, you know, you, you don't get any work at all you get you're, they don't even want you for background work when you're uh, 40 if you haven't made it can you believe that um, that's what my friends at, back home tell me mm -hmm. and anyway so I, uh, I I just did seven films back to back I'm doing this one I'm doing three more after this but by the grace of God and I think I honestly think it, I came to a point in my life where I didn't give a crap anymore. Can I say that? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Uh, I didn't give a shit anymore. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't give a shit anymore. I didn't care. Um, I wanted uh, to expose my soul, bare my soul, and I got to a point where I, I jumped out the box and I don't care anymore what anybody thinks of me. If you don't like me, fine. Go away. I don't care. You know what? I, I, I am what I am and I was always afraid, you know, doing uh, previously doing huge, very large budget films mm -hmm. and you always have to stay in the box, you know, and you have a script supervisor and you can't alter one line. But the, the beauty about independent films is that the directors, in my experience, always give you the latitude to improvise and I come from the Groundlings Theater and I always, mm -hmm. I have to improvise and I brought a lot of stuff with me, crazy stuff and something pretty shocking that's going to happen in the movie that they're not going to they're not exposing uh they're keeping it completely uh quiet sealed uh something that's going to happen in the movie mm -hmm. in my in my segment okay. and uh th we were they were going to take pictures of it and then the director said no no we got it we're going to save this for uh the audience because mm -hmm. otherwise it'll give the whole gag away <clears throat> but i play miss tate the mother of a psychopath right okay uh, and it, he's called a sledgehammer, and uh, she's a whack job. Uh, what I did in this movie is I did in my own way, in the spirit of, I didn't try to emulate, I didn't try to imitate Betty Davis, and, oh, wow. and whatever happened to Baby Jane. Right. That, but, but that was the spirit of what, which I played this character, Miss Tate, who has left the planet years ago, and... The detective comes in and he's looking for my son, okay. and I and I have a breakdown and I say I haven't seen my son uh, for many many years and uh, I tell the detective the terrible things that happened to my son and and I'm playing the role on crutches and that was my idea to play the role on crutches okay. and there's a reason that I'm playing the role on crutches right? Um, what about you? Tell me about you. Enough about my bullshit. <laughs> I interview famous people and they tell me stuff. What do they tell you? Um, about their lives, their careers, their hobbies, the, what's coming up, and then they tell jokes and then we joke and stuff. And we talk about beer a lot too. Do you like beer? No, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm an al I love beer. I love vodka, but vodka and beer don't like me. 
I'm I'm a different animal when I w- used to drink. Mm-hmm. I wish I, I wish I could drink. I mean, I I loved drinking, and I was a completely different monster. I mean, person drinking. <laughs> Well, I like this monster. You're a nice monster. Well, I'm sober. That's why. Awesome. You, you don't want to know the other one. But, you know, everybody I know drinks, and that's cool. And everybody I know back home smokes pot, and that's cool. But, you know, I myself cannot, uh, I, can't, I can't do it because um, um, I have these little things called blackouts, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I wake up on, on a rooftop somewhere in Panama. <laughs> and of course I blame somebody else. It's somebody else's fault, right? A rooftop in Panama? Yeah. Anyway, so t- who's the most exciting person you ever interviewed? You. Oh, stop. <laughs> I bet you tell everybody that. Hi. Uh, anyway. Lou Ferrigno is pretty awesome. He was a pretty nice guy, pretty sweet. Who? Lou Ferrigno. Oh my gosh, cool. he's a fantastic actor, and yeah. everybody loves him. I've never heard in my life one good, I mean, bad thing about him. <laughs> Ever! Yeah, and his wife, is he still married to that be- his beautiful blonde wife? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, he's a incredibly talented and versatile and uh, uh, very caring and giving actor. Mm-hmm. Awesome, dude. Now, I got to ask you, because I heard so many good things about the shoot, how it went today. You got you to gotta give us something, like, because I heard the scene was amazing. Thank you. Um, <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. Um, I, all I can say is I did my best, and I uh, rehearsed the role for uh, quite some time, coming up with different ideas, characters. It's Well, she's basically, um, you know, it was basically just a, a mother, you know, a cop coming and looking for a son. Well, I left my mind. I, my, I lost my mind, and I made her the biggest whack job of all time. Underplayed everything, and uh, I have a certain creature that uh, I'm beholden to, and it's beholden to me. And that's all I'm going to say about what you. Hopefully, you will someday see, but. The, uh, the director, everyone said you're astonishing, unbelievable. Uh, uh, a couple of times the director said he had to get off camera just to watch what I was doing because I improvise and I, I do just do a lot of improv. I'm not trying to brag. You asked me. You asked me! Absolutely. He asked me. <laughs> All I know is Jonathan Tearson ran up to me, gave me a hug, and he goes, you will not believe the scene that happened today. It was mind-blowing. It was incredible. Oh, how could he say that when he showed up five minutes after it was over? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, it, it, it went great. He's a, he's an incredible actor. Um, he's my he plays my son, and we got some kind of thing going. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of kind of creepy thing going. And uh, he's basically a, a serial killer. And I, I don't know. Do you know the the story? The basic Basically, premise? Yeah. yeah. So good because I don't. <laughs> I just know the segment I'm in. That's all I care about. Involves this '80s video store, which I is know. amazing. You know, I just got. I was just brought down here by um, the production designer. I am absolutely stunned. Have you been able to pan around to see this store, mm, this incredible. video store? I, I, I assumed when I was told early on that they were going to they were going to um, make a tribute to the '80s, which I love because you know most of my movies were from the '80s, and and um, personally I don't like sci-fi. I don't like big old comic book movies, even though I wrote a comic book with the great Larry Cohen, who's wow. my best friend. Um, and he uh, wrote Phone Booth, as you know, yeah. and Cellular. I wrote the treatment for Cellular. Amazing. And he uh, has done bestseller. It's a lie. One, two, three, four, five, ten. <laughs> I don't know how many he did. Anyway, he's still he's still writing. He's still working. And uh, the funniest human being I've ever met in my life. There's a documentary coming out about him called awesome. King King Cohen. They have 19 hours of. Uh, footage. So I told, I suggested, I don't tell anybody anything. I just suggested why, to the producers, why don't you make a TV series out of this or sell it to cable? Uh, and one of the producers said, no, it's going to be a feature film. And, okay, but you know, there's, you have so much footage, 19 hours. Well, we're cutting it down to two hours. And I said, are you leaving my stuff in? And they said, you and Larry, you're the, the way you bicker back and forth, of course you, you two idiots are in it. Uh, and there's Larry over there, law, uh, dementia, uh, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> hope he doesn't see this or hear it. That's awesome. <laughs> 
Thank you so much for your time. What is that supposed Mom's to be? Mom's shaking her hand. I thought You're I was like, here for two more hours. <laughs> what is this, a two hour interview? That's what I was told. <laughs> Oh, All right. Up. Well, you've been watching Groovy TV. Groovy, yay! <laughs> yay! Groovy TV. Ah. Well, this is your time to enter Groovy. <laughs> Groovy. So, when did you start uh, be, being an interviewer? Um, and why is your ha hair purple? Um, well, Was it born like that? Were you born like that? First one, probably like, what, six, seven years ago, something like that. Second of all, it was because I am deranged and have issues. I love it. I love it. <laughs> We're going to get along just great. Absolutely. Well, I'll take your hair and you have my, my beard. That'd be sweet. I love, I love your beard. I think, I mean, you, you, you just so stand out. I, I saw you driving down the street, and I, I screamed to my friend, the, my actor friend, Look at that guy with a purple beard. We must be at the right place. And he said, I don't think so. Those people look so weird. And I said, oh, no, let's just go there anyway. Forget where we're supposed to go. I swear. Let's just go there anyway. And he says, well, and he's flagging down somebody who says, you guys are, that's the right place. And I said, yeah. Follow the purple beard. That's right. Well, it's been lovely interviewing you. Thank you so much. It's been an honor. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Groovy TV. Jazz hands. Ja oh, oh, jazz hands. <laughs> Woo! Shake a doodle. Okay. Oh, by the way, rescue, rescue, rescue. Rescue, don't read for greed, please. I have pit bulls. I rescue pit bulls. Please. Rescue. Rescue. Don't breed for greed. There goes half the country. I don't care. Here comes the hate mail. I don't care. Bye. Bye.